Hello again, Paul Shepard here, uh, Senior Consultant with Award Solutions. And this is uh, part two of uh, a series on Volte and IMS. And we're going to continue our discussion about sort of the main components of the IMS network that will play roles in Volte calls. And we're going to talk a little bit more about the CSCF and their function. So in the last one, we talked about the three different CSCFs and we described their roles. Let's go into a little bit more detail on exactly how these get set up and more importantly, how the UE finds out about them. So we have the proxy CSCF. If you will recall, we said last time that when we have a UE and that UE is going to send SIP messages to the IMS network, those messages of course will traverse the LTE network and that the UE is always going to send its any SIP message to the proxy CSCF. And conversely, any SIP message received by the UE will always come from the proxy CSCF. So the question might be, how does the UE know the address or the IP address or the location of the proxy CSCF. And there are really three methods by which this can be done. And it's known as, the terminology that's used is PCSCF discovery, one, we could actually configure that into the UE itself as part of the SIP client software on the mobile. We could actually configure it. So it could be pre configured on the UE. Two, we might have the UE go and query some sort of server, for example, a DNS server, um, saying, I want to find out the identity and IP address for a proxy CSCF. So we could go do a query. from a UE, e.g. DNS, or well, the third method is for the network, and specifically the LTE network, to provide that during the initial attach process and during the setup of the bearer for IMS. So we'll say provided by the LTE network. And this third method is the one we're going to use. The other two methods, the first one is really not a suitable mechanism to use in a mobile environment, in a wireless environment. If I'm in a wireless environment and I'm roaming, I'm not necessarily always going to talk to the same proxy CSCF. So that could be something that's used in a fixed wireline environment, but it's not really applicable for wireless networks. The second one, Again, probably not the ideal situation for wireless networks. If I've got to go query a DNS, well, how, which DNS would I know how to go query if I was in roaming in somebody else's network? So we're going to use the third method during the attach procedure, during the setup of our connectivity to the IMS network. We will provide that information through some means to the UE. And how it's actually done is not entirely standardized. Some of it is it's going to vary operator to operator. So having got that, let's now look at, go into how, or let's look at the serving CSCF. Now, question, does the UE really need to know the identity of the serving CSCF. The answer is actually no, although we do actually provide it to, to the UE as part of the registration process. So it is there, it is provided, during registration.
Let's also look at the interrogating CSCF. So for the I, the UE is totally unaware that this entity even exists. Never knows where it is, never knows what it's used for, never communicates with it directly. So the UE is always going to send all of its messages to the proxy CSCF and the rest of the network is kind of hidden from it. Let's very briefly look then at a SIP message flow, typical SIP message flow through the network. Again, UE, proxy, CSCF, serving CSCF. I'm going to send a SIP message. For example, if I'm doing a Volte call, I'm going to send a SIP invite. That's going to go to the proxy CSCF. And remember, I obtained the identity and IP address of the proxy CSCF when I attach to the network. The proxy CSCF is going to forward that SIP invite onto the serving CSCF. The proxy CSCF learns the identity of the serving CSCF for this user during the initial IMS registration. And at this point you may say, well, where does the ICSCF come into play? Well, up until this point it doesn't. It doesn't need to come into play and be interrogated until we get to the terminating part of the call leg. And we'll look at that aspect in a future video. Stay tuned and uh, we'll start to talk a little bit more about this SIP invite setup and call routing. Thank you.